Welcome to the online video content for topic 6.15, having to do with the properties and reactions of alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyls. Before attempting the problems in this video homework, I recommend that you read Lesson 6.15 in the Organic Chemistry 2 Primer 2018 by Professors Hujiri, Tennyson, and Smith. The reactions we're going to consider in this lesson involve the reactions of nucleophiles with alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyls, and nucleophiles are naturally attracted to partial positive charges. So this first problem is simply asking you which atoms in this molecule have a partial positive charge and therefore should be targets of consideration for reaction with nucleophiles. Now the most obvious site for a partial positive carbon would be simply considering the polar carbon-oxygen bond. So certainly we'll have a partial positive charge on that carbon of the carbonyl unit. But we should also consider the potential for induced positive charge due to resonance contributors. As we see here, if we move this pi bond into this space and move the other pi bond as a lone pair onto the oxygen to make it negatively charged, we can then induce a positive charge on the carbon here. And that's the one, two, three, fourth unit from the oxygen. So we can account for partial positive charges on the second and fourth carbons if we count one, two, three, four from the oxygen. So carbons two and four are candidates for attack by a nucleophile. If you've read the lesson, you'll know that the particular site, carbon two or carbon four, that is attacked by a nucleophile has to do with the particular type of nucleophile that's involved in the reaction. So here we have a question that asks us what the major product is for this reaction, and it also asks us to provide a reasonable arrow pushing mechanism for the process. Here, the nucleophile is a Grignard reagent. The nucleophile is provided by the Grignard reagent. We know that Grignard reagents are strong bases, and if you read the lesson, you know that the favorability for either 1, 2, or 1, 4 addition has to do with how unstable the nucleophile is. A strong base is very unstable, and those unstable nucleophiles tend to favor the 1, 2 addition, which is also known as direct addition. So if we think about this and we draw the ethyl anion that would result from dissociation of the ethyl group from the Grignard reagent, we can have simple direct addition to the ketone like we've seen for a lot of different ketones throughout the semester. And that will lead to the formation of this species. You'll notice that if an ethyl group attaches to this carbon, the carbon is now a chiral center. And we started with an achiral starting material. Neither of these two is chiral, of course. So we would get a racemic mixture. The second step is aqueous acid, and that serves to protonate your intermediary anion, and that gives you a racemic mixture of this alcohol. Now what happens if we're asked to provide a major isolated organic product from the reaction where we just use a Gilman reagent? Well, these Gilman reagents are not strong bases. They are utilized primarily because they're more stable than Grignard reagents. That makes them a little safer to handle. And the reactivity is a little different in some cases as well. And in the case of reactions with alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyls, these nucleophiles favor 1,4 addition as you read about in the lesson. So if we think about the ethyl group with these two electrons here in this bond between the ethyl and the copper, serving as a nucleophile to attack the one, two, three, the fourth position, we would have an arrow pushing mechanism that looks like this pushing the negative charge onto the oxygen, an electronegative atom, where it would be more stable. And since we've generated a chiral center here, we'd have a racemic mixture of the two potential isomers. In the second step, where we have an aqueous acid, we would protonate this oxygen. And we would think about this particular intermediate species. But this carbon has both an alcohol and an alkene going to it. And we know that once you make an enol like that, it will tautomerize so the actual isolated product is the keto form. So our final actual isolated product will be a racemic mixture of this ketone. We can also be asked this type of question in the reverse fashion where we are given a starting material, given a product we're trying to attain, and asked what type of reagents we would need to best accomplish this. So in order to address this type of problem, you have to think to yourself, well, I need to identify what type of changes have taken place. We're going to have to get rid of this pi bond, and we're going to add this ethyl group. And the ethyl group has added to the fourth position in that pi conjugated system. 
So we need some type of reagent that is capable of providing an ethyl group in a 1,4 addition process. The 1,4 addition of an alkyl group is generally mediated by a Gilman reagent among the reagents we've studied in this course. So we should have an ethyl Gilman reagent which has this form shown in part one. And that would give us a racemic mixture, it doesn't really ask about stereochemistry in this problem, of the target product. One of the other classic reactions that an alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl can undergo is the Michael addition. And this takes place when you have an alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl such as this one, and then your other reagent is some other carbonyl bearing unit which upon reaction with a base can form an enolate that will serve as the attacking nucleophile. So as soon as you see a carbonyl with a base, I hope you will think about alpha carbon deprotonation. And in this case, there is a site that has two alpha carbons between two carbonyl units that's very easy to deprotonate due to resonance stabilization. Once that enolate nucleophile is generated, it is stabilized by resonance to either that carbonyl or this other carbonyl. Good and stable, not a very strong base. It should be able to engage in a 1,4 addition process with this alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. And this is exactly the type of process that is known as a Michael addition, the reaction of an enolate with an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl in a 1,4 addition process. If you think about the general Michael addition, mechanism which I've shown in this yellow box and then you highlight the corresponding enolate anion here in our particular reactants and the 1,4 addition sites here in this conjugated segment between the alkene and the carbonyl you can identify those particular pieces and this will work for a variety of different R double prime, R triple prime, R and R prime sites. We happen to have pretty simple groups like an ethyl methyl and then we have this group over here and this methoxy group over here. We just need to make sure that in designing our product and writing it down for our answer that we have the correct disposition of all the particular substituents. So we keep this in mind. That might be something you draw on your scratch papers you're doing with this type of problem. And I like to number the different groups and the different components and when we put them together we will have a compound that looks like this and the one, two, three, four positions we can highlight here. We've added our nucleophile to carbon number four right here. That would be a chiral center at that point. We have started with certainly a chiral starting materials. So we have to have a racemic mixture of the products. We can also think about this the other way. We can think about a Michael addition where we're asked for the two reagents that would be necessary to prepare the compound by a conjugate addition to an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. The fact that it asks us to use an alpha beta unsaturated ketone indicates that it's going to be the ketone side, not the aldehyde side, that's going to be the alpha beta unsaturated unit. And that helps us to figure out our problem a little bit more easily. First, we have to recognize that well, if we have this alpha beta unsaturated ketone, we start to think, well, before the reaction takes place, it's got to be unsaturated at the alpha beta position. And the other piece that attacks would have to be this. This would have to serve as our nucleophile somehow to attack that unit. That's a Michael addition, like we just saw in the previous problem. Whenever you've identified the type of reaction that's going to take place, you might want to jot down the simplest sort of example of that reaction you can think of. So here's the general Michael addition pathway. So if you look at this target product that we saw on the previous page, say, well, I'm going to need this to be my nucleophile that attacks, serves the role of this enolate in my general mechanism, and this unit's going to have to come from some sort of alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl, which serves the purpose of this unit in my general mechanism, I can then pretty easily say that these are the two pieces I need to put together. And in order to make this aldehyde into the enolate, I'm going to need some type of base to pull off a proton from carbon 5 so that it's anionic like in the general mechanism. So if I'm planning this whole synthesis, I would need this ketone, this aldehyde, and the addition of a base to generate the enolate by deprotonation of this alpha position. And that would be the final plant synthesis to target this synthetic molecule. 
One of the more involved applications involving an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl is the Robinson annulation. This problem is asking us to identify the major organic product of a Robinson annulation between these two particular starting materials. The Robinson annulation is not really learning a new reaction per se, it's really just putting two of the reactions we learned previously together. So the Michael addition, which we talked about a couple of times in this homework set, is the first step. And then after you do that Michael addition, you do an intramolecular aldol condensation, meaning an aldol condensation occurs between two pieces within the same molecule. And that's rather a complicated process. So it makes sense to try to break this down, do it carefully, one step at a time. So we're going to do the Michael addition first. Michael addition requires an enolate as your nucleophile. So you say, okay, my Michael addition is going to be some nucleophile attacking this alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. This unit is going to have to provide me with a nucleophile somehow. And by using this base, I'm going to be able to deprotonate that unit somehow to make an enolate. Now, there are two alpha positions available to deprotonate, and as per usual, you're going to try to deprotonate the most acidic site. So which of those two potential alpha positions is the most acidic? Would I rather have a negative charge here or here, which would be more stable? Well, if I have my negative charge here, I'm going to have additional stabilization by resonance because that's at a benzylic position, in addition to being alpha to the carbonyl. So this is the site that will form the most stable enolate is the most acidic site for deprotonation. And if we think about that particular enolate and using that as the nucleophile to do a 1,4 addition in a Michael addition process, well, the net result is that you've added this whole unit. It's added to the fourth position of this 1, 2, 3, 4 pi conjugated system. So that would be your Michael addition product. That's the first step of the Robinson annulation. And you'll notice that because I've generated a chiral center here, I've indicated it's a racemic mixture. Now we have this Michael addition product, and that's the first step of the Robinson annulation. But the second step is intramolecular aldol condensation. So in order to do an aldol condensation, if you remember, that's a reaction where some carbonyl reacts with the alpha position of some other carbonyl and the net result is that you get a double bond between those two sites. So if this was the carbonyl, that would be this unit down here. So we first have to identify if it's intramolecular, it's going to form a cycle, what are the favorable ring sizes? You will tend only to do intramolecular reactions to form cyclic structures that form favorable ring sizes, ring sizes with minimal ring strain. So we have two carbonyls in the structure. Here's one of them, and here's one of its alpha positions. If we say, well, let's consider if this alpha position gets deprotonated and attacks the other carbonyl, how big would the ring be if I did that reaction? You're trying to find the most favorable reaction. And I've numbered this chain, highlighted it in red, to try to emphasize that you would make a six-membered ring if this alpha carbon bent all the way around and reacted with this carbon over here. A six-membered ring is actually the most favored ring size, as we learned way back in Organic 1 when we talked about the favorability of the cyclohexane ring. But we should consider our other options as well. This same carbonyl unit that we considered above, up here, has a second alpha position right here. But if we were to deprotonate that position, and it was to attack this other carbonyl, that would only form a four-membered ring, as I've numbered here, one, two, three, four. And a four-membered ring suffers from significant ring strain. That will not be very favorable. So at this point, we've considered the alpha positions on either side of that first carbonyl. Let's consider this other carbonyl. It also has alpha positions. The first alpha position we could consider is down here. If that alpha position got deprotonated and reacted with the other carbonyl as a nucleophile, we'd have a ring that was one, two, three, four, five, six carbons long, as highlighted by this red string of bonds. And that would be relatively stable as well, our first analysis. And finally, we could say, well, what if we had this carbonyl, instead of considering the bottom alpha position down here, let's consider the top alpha position here. 
if we deprotonated that position and it became an anion and it was to attack the other carbonyl, we'd have a one, two, three, four carbon long chain that would form a four membered ring. That's not very stable. So now we've identified two potential six membered ring forming reactions. Our attempt is to make a CC double bond between the alpha carbon of one of these sites to the carbonyl carbon of the other site, as I mentioned at the beginning of the problem. Now this reaction will take place relatively easily if I do this reaction. But if we attempt to do the reaction where this alpha carbon comes all the way around to this other carbonyl, this unit's going to have to be in between those two units, and that's going to provide some steric hindrance to that process. So this process will be significantly disfavored relative to the first possibility. So the correct final major Robinson annulation product will be this one.